East Tennessee State in their road uniforms, navy blue and gold. App State in the white trimmed in black and gold, their school colors. It'll be Calvin Talford at 6-4, jumping up for Appalachian State. Steve Spurlock, there are your lineups and your matchups. Calvin Talford gets the tip to Marty Storr. The Bucks have the ball to start the game. App State in a man-to-man. And Major Gear threw it away. Nobody to throw to. But he got off the floor, and when he got off the floor, then he was looking for someone. It's too late when you do that. Bucks open also in a man-to-man. Out front. Great and here's another steal. Calford took it away. And here come the Bucks once again. Keith Jennings penetrating. Back to Calford. Missed it. Long rebound controlled by Ricky Ned, the freshman from New York. Down on the block it goes. Good. The basket by Ricky Ned. Debris thrown out on the floor at the first basket. Alan LaForce feels like, hey, might be a technical foul there somewhere. Nevertheless, he's really wanting that, and uh, he's got a pretty good argument. I, I was under the impression that they uh, pretty much outlawed that. You see Alan there uh, looking at the action, and uh, officials and some of the cheerleaders and other people are cleaning up the debris from the floor. So the first two-point lead of the game goes to App State as Ricky Ned gets the bucket. Ricky Ned, that talented freshman from up in New York City. He's, a, he's really playing well right now for Tom Apke, who has two players on his bench who average in double figures. They got really seven starters. Major gear in the corner. Marty Story penetrating, tapped away. Loose ball. Story dives out of bounds to the Mountaineer. Marty Story with a real good first step against Steve Spurlock, but after he passed Spurlock, he couldn't get the handle on the ball. Up the floor comes App State. Jeff Williams, the freshman. One of two freshmen in the starting lineup for Tom Apke. They try to drive by power. Pretty good move to the bucket uh, that time. Uh, Calvin Talford came. He didn't come far enough. He might have picked up the charge. East Tennessee gets his first bucket. That bucket by Darrell Jones, and, and it was at the elbow, uh, the left elbow. And, and I'll tell you what, you got to be happy if you're a Buccaneer fan to see him pop that 15-foot J. Darrell Jones on the year only hits 29% of his free throws, 39% from the floor. Powers in the lane, short. Rebound, Darrell Jones. Here comes Mr. Jennings. Bucks look to tie. This trip up the floor. Marty Story for three, short. Powers with a rebound. Into the front court now comes App State. In the corner, Edward hangs a three. Well, we said at the top of the program here, he's a natural two-player, and when he spots up behind that three-point circle, he can knock it down, Randy. Keith Jennings answers with a three. <laughs> it might be picked up from where we left off Wednesday night. This game is going to be a high-scoring affair. App State with a two-point lead. What a great game that was Wednesday night in Memphis. The Bucks won by three in overtime. Over the Tigers, there's a steal. Jennings took it away, up the floor for Marty Story. Missed the dunk, but he is fouled by Appalachian State. So Story will get two free throws. The foul will be on number 25. That's Jeff Williams, his first first team foul this half. Going to see Marty Story coming down the lane, and that's pretty good uh, interference run by Darrell, but that's a great foul by Jeff Williams to keep him from scoring in transition. Marty Story, I talked to Marty today. I told him, hey, Marty, you know your football coach over at Greenville High School, Mike Franklin, he was a teammate of mine, Randy, in high school 25 years ago. That was where? Blacksburg? That was Blacksburg, South Carolina. Mike Franklin now coaching at Greenville High School, one of the football staff members over there at Greenville, Tennessee. Get it into Ed Ward. Get the best transition ball. Someone got lost that time in transition for East Tennessee. 
Ed Ward faked like he was coming up, and then he back cut, and his man went for the fake, and he was wide open for the layup. Keith Jennings in the trick. That's on the line. Out of bounds. The turnover gives it back to App State. And the Mountaineers have a three-point lead in the ball with 18.51 to go in the first half. Talford sits down, and Rodney English checks in for East Tennessee. East Tennessee State substituting a lot. I, I really think that the bench production has got to be good for the Buccaneers because of all the minutes that people played in Memphis. Apps couldn't get it in, so they call a timeout. There's a break in the action. 18.51 to go. Mountaineers by three, and we'll be right back. Three-point lead for App State. Spurlock gets the first bucket for the Mountaineers. Well, that was Spurlock who got free and not Ed Ward. And, and the thing about it is that was Darrell Jones that was chasing him. So evidently that was uh, Darrell that went for that fake. And there's a foul against East Tennessee. It'll be on who? I believe that might be on Marty Story. Marty Story. Story gets the fir first personal foul for him first on the Bucks, and App State again plays it in with a three-point lead 18-39 to go in the first half Powers they nice go play. down low to Spurlock that's a nice play inside it comes to the high post and then uh, one on one underneath the bucket it's what Memphis State did the other night with Munch and their power player underneath Marty Story with the ball Gets it to Darrell Jones. Here's English working the baseline. Great job defensively by App State, but Jennings rips his second three. He's got six, and it's a two-point game. The Buccaneers really need to pressure Jeff Williams. He's, a, he's really a forward out of high school playing point guard as a freshman. Spurlock misses the three. Darrell Jones gets the board. Bucks can tie. There's the lob. English couldn't handle it. That's Travel. A, oh, that was a great defensive uh, play right then, Randy. You don't see this, but Alvin West created that turnover with good denial defense on the wing pass. Calvin Talford will check back in for East Tennessee State. And Darrell Jones will sit down. So the Buccaneers now with their short lineup at the game. And that's a great lineup. Now they create, a lot of people say, well, they got problems guarding those big uh, Mountaineers, but the problem with that is the Mountaineers have to guard them, and that was a problem Memphis State had. Alvin West too hard with a three. Rebound comes off to Appalachian State. Steve Spurlock. Spurlock's having a great year. 22 points, nine rebounds a game. Inside, stolen away to the Bucs. Here's Calford. Uh-oh. That's an intentional foul. Woo. Calford missed the layup, but it was caused by the foul by Steve Spurlock. Boy, that was either a great thinking defensive move, or you could call this uh, an intentional foul. Because he's out front going in there. Look at that push right there. I don't know. I might have given him a couple of shots in the basketball. Nevertheless, Calford will get two shots the foul by Spurlock. And checking into the lineup now, Broderick Parker, the 6'4 junior from North Little Rock. Sitting down is the freshman, Ricky Ned. Broderick Parker was the player of the year in Arkansas. He's, a, he's, he's averaging double figures off the bench. How many times do you ever see a team that has, has two players come off the bench who average in double figures? East Tennessee's got one in Rodney England. Got a, they have a very good one. And almost another. Stolen by Keith Jennings. They got good numbers here. There's the jam by East Tennessee State. Calvin Calvert gives the Bucks their first lead of the game, 13 to 11. And the mister with good recognition saw Calvin Calvert coming. He held up behind the three-point circle, and he gets the jam. There's the foul. It'll be on East Tennessee State. And there is a huge East Tennessee State contingent of fans in here. Very vocal group of fans. The foul was 
hands on Rodney English. That's a pretty good dunk right then. Great recognition by uh, Mr. Jennings. They're having a little discussion. They thought they were going to give him two shots, but they couldn't, or they might have got a goal to it. Look here. Missed the shot. Rebound inside. Spinning away for it was Broderick Parker. Keith Jennings gets the ball, taken away by Parker. A charge on Broderick Parker. Randy, I believe that bucket might count, but uh, that's a pretty good recognition by Jones to step in there to draw the uh, charge. They give him the bucket, and Jones picks up uh, the defensive uh, move there to get the foul. Pretty good Bro by Darrell. Broderick Parker gets the bucket. And we are tied at 13, and East Tennessee State gets the ball. Mountaineers might show a little zone right here. They'll have a 3-2, I think, Randy, to cover up that perimeter shooting by the Buccaneers. East Tennessee patiently works it around the horn. West for three. Oh, what a beautiful shot. Does it, 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 it's vulnerable on the baseline, and uh, if you run a two-three, you're vulnerable in the wing, and so uh, that's a pretty good job of getting the bucket down for the Buccaneers on the baseline. Roderick Parker, dogged by Marty Story. Here's Ward pulling up and shooting the three. I have four seven. He misses. Great pass. Jennings to Story. It's the dog. see people missing those uh, dumps out front. Look at Marty Story. He's going to take it right down the heart of the lane, and he's going to go up, but look at this. Back of the rim, and boom, it's coming out. They lose. Rodney English gets it back, and the Bucks have a five-point lead now. 18-13. Bucks are three out of four in three-point shots, and they're picking up where they left off with Memphis State. Spurlock guarded by Chalford. Inside, power spinning, nice move. Shot won't go, but the foul against Alvin West. It's a good play by Alvin West to reach in. I know the foul is not something that's uh, nice, but at least he is conscious of helping inside against those post players. At the free throw line, Tim Powers for Appalachian State. Powers, a 6'9 junior from Omaha, a 74% foul shooter. He's good at the line. Some more substitutions. Ricky Ned in for the Mountaineers. And also checking back in Jeff Williams. You know, Randy, the Buccaneers look a little out of sync, but in spite of that uh, uh, play, you look up the scoreboard and, and, and they got a five-point lead. And, and the thing that's amazing about that, Tom Abney said they're like a 440 relay team we're like a group of shot putters and discus throwers. <laughs> That's a pretty good analogy. Powers makes one out of two. Little full court pressure right now. Elfrey gets it into Jennings right at the last minute. Keith Jennings roars through everybody and a blocking foul against Appalachian State. Billy Ross. Well, the problem with that full court pressure, you got uh, Ed Ward trying to check Mr. Jennings. Once he gets by the, the, the pressure, it's going to be a layup or a foul. Look at him. Penetration. It's, uh, look at there. He's going to pass the ball off. He could have actually pulled up right there and shot it. Down on the block to Calvin Talford. Alvin West to Jennings. Jennings fakes the three. Nice Beautiful pass. feed to Pelfrey. Pelfrey walks. Point lead for East Tennessee. App State trying to do something about that. Pelfrey gets with a personal foul following the turnover a moment ago. It'll be his first. And with two shots for App State will be Jeff Williams, number 25. You're going to see the foul right here. Jeff Williams, he really looks good. 
good, he's a good freshman. As a matter of fact, there are two freshmen starting for the Mountaineers. They really think here at Booth that Ricky Ned has a chance to be the freshman of the year in the Southern Conference. First free throw by Powers is good. Appalachia State has been atrocious at the free throw line this year, only 63.5%. Pulls up and fires, misses the three. English got the rebound, fed it to West. West for three, yes. It's just unbelievable how many times they will spot up behind that three-point circle. So many weapons there, and that's the thing that Tom Apke was concerned about. He says, hey, they're so explosive, they make a lot of bursts and a lot of spurts. We have gotta be able to survive those. Tennessee with a five-point lead. Each team has had a lead of five points, but now it belongs to the Bucks. With 12.04 to go, first half. App State, Jeff Williams working back out front. Shot by Williams, no good. Tipped around, Powers got it, goes back up. Won't go, but the foul against Rodney English. Send Tim Powers to the free throw line. Powers made one out of two a moment ago in his first appearance there. And Spurlock will check in for Powers after he shoots his free throw. Marty Story also coming back in for the Buccaneers. That's number two on Rodney England. So that's why he's on the bench and Story's back in. Makes the first. He'll get another. <laughs> Missed it. Two out of four for Powers, and East Tennessee with the ball and a four point lead. Here's West. Carry up shot won't go. Pelfrey has it in trouble. Calford misses the three. Powers with a rebound. Block, they go to Billy Ross. That's a pretty good power basketball, but look at here. Here we got Calvin Sanders running the catch that. And he was fouled as he was going to go up by Broderick Parker. It was almost like Broderick Parker was thinking, hey, we got to get back in this transition defense. We can't allow that lob jam from Calvin Town. Foul was on Parker of App State. That's his second. And we're going to have a timeout. 11 minutes, 19 seconds on the clock. It has been a fast and furious pace, and the Bucks lead by two. We'll be right back. East Tennessee with a two-point lead. As we resume play, 11-19 to go. Michael Woods in the ball game now for the Buccaneers. Field goal percentage, 50 for East Tennessee. 42 for the Bucs as Woods lost it out of bounds. I think Michael Woods that time was going down to maybe set a pick. He didn't realize how wide open he was. And that was a great pass from the Mr. Michael was just not looking for that pass. The freshman, Jeff Williams, working against Mr. Jenny. Boy, that's a score, isn't it? it really is. Up his dribble too far away. He's got to be able to pass the ball to somebody before he picks that up. Good defense by Jerry Pelfrey. Pelfrey strips Spurlock to the ball. There's the lob again. Jennings to Calford. They're two out of three in the first ten minutes of this game of that play. Boy, you got to love uh, Mr. Jennings. That's such a great pass. Talk about Calvin's ability to go up and catch it and put it down before. What a super pass from the Pistons. Good defense there, but Pelfrey taking away that first pass. Down low, Williams missed the shot. Inside, Ross with a follow. -up. A lot of gambling in a pass lane by the Buccaneers, and that's what made that uh, rebound and put back possible. Keith Jennings penetrates, drops it to Pelfrey, who's wide open. And he fills it up with a three. Uh, we saw him do that at Cincinnati. We saw him do 
good at Memphis State. Remember who is checking? Jerry Pelfrey has got to respect his ability to shoot the three-point jumper. Really had a super game in Memphis. Down low they go on the baseline. Parker spins away, missed the shot. Tipped outside, controlled by Spurlock, and then there's the foul on Keith Jennings. That'll be his first. Many times will you see the Mr. <laughs> get up in the air to, to, to block a 6'8 Steve Spurlock shot. The word Mr., according to Webster's New World Dictionary, is a shortened form of master, a title before a name to designate a certain man as eminently representative of a group. You're going to see right here, he's, this is why he's such an eminent player. What a great pass in there to Calvin Talbot. That has to really take a lot of athletic ability just to get that pass. And then on the other end, you got one of the great athletes of all the nation in Calvin Talbot who can go up and catch it and put it down. Burlock makes two out of two for App State. But now it's a three-point game again as Pelfrey brings it up the floor. Jennings with the ball in the corner. Jennings for three, in and out. Nice. Look at Pelfrey. Jerry Pelfrey made that bucket with great hustle in the lane that time. I'm telling you, he's playing well. He hadn't been shooting well until the game in Memphis. And, and, and really, he got his confidence up in that game. 15 points in the second half alone. Burlock with the ball. Great play. Deal by Darrell Jones. And he lost. <laughs> Darrell's not used to handling that ball that far away from Bucket. But again, you know what precipitated that turnover was the good pressure on the perimeter by Jerry Pelfrey. We we're talking a lot about him right now, but he's picking up exactly where he left off over at Memphis State. Inside the Around the perimeter, it comes to Ricky Ned, the freshman who's back in there for App State. Burlock. They got a lot of big people away from the basket right now. That was a good pass by Ed Ward. Unfortunately, his teammates didn't see it because it was such a great pass, they didn't expect it. When you play for Allen, of course, we talk a lot about Les Robinson. What a great job this man has done in the half-court defense. So much pressure. That's a factor that I think has caused him to be a 17 and 2 club right now. A steal. Williams got the layup after he took the ball away from Mr. Jennings. And at the other end of the floor, in transition, that state player was shaken up. How many times are you going to see a freshman guard, Jeff Williams, take the what take the ball away from Mr. Jennings? You're going to see right here, he, kept, he comes right up on him now. And when he puts it on the floor, he reaches in, he gets away with the reach in, and he takes it the other direction to score. Well, he's a foot taller almost <laughs> than Mr. Jennings. I talked to him before the game. He said, hey, coach, I used to guard bigger boys. I'm not used to guard people as small as Mr. Jennings. Foul is against. Appalachian State's Billy Ross. That'll be his second foul, and that will send the Buccaneers to the free throw line. And Talford will be there for two shots. Mr. Jennings is going to take a rest right now because after all those minutes, 43 minutes in the game Wednesday night, that has to be a factor. They don't want to play him all that much here tonight or more than they have to because Chattanooga's coming to town on Monday night in a game which uh, Mr. Jennings said could be the biggest game ever in the dome. Cowford misses the second. Bucks by four, and App State has the ball. That is going to be a big one. You don't have your tickets now up in Johnson City. You better get them Monday morning early. Chattanooga, of course, the only team in the conference that's been a loss on uh, the Buccaneers. Baseline, jumper by Ward, no good. Lost out of bounds off the hands of Ricky Ned of App State. And we're going to take a timeout with 7.35 to go in the ball game. East Tennessee, when we come back, will have the ball and a four-point lead. 
three-point lead for the Bucks. Here's how they have done it. It's Calvin Talbert has 11 points in the first half. Yeah, but a great no-look pass from Pelfrey. He looked at Darrell Jones on his right and then sneaks it over on the left side to Talbert. Look at the turnovers. Not a whole lot of discrepancy here if you like Appalachian State. story out front for East Tennessee. Bucks by six, that's their biggest lead. And State had an earlier five-point lead. Into the lane, Spurlock spinning, drops it to Ward, who's open, no good. Brazel Silvers, the freshman for East Tennessee, gets the rebound. Mr. Jennings lost the ball. Taken away by Spurlock. Pelfrey knocks it away from Ward. Jennings gets it. Great feed to Talbert for another dunk. That's a pretty good job on both ends of the floor, Randy. They took the ball away in transition, and then in their transition, they finished it off. Calvin Talbert, the game's leading score now with 13. Three of those uh, buckets were dunked. Great job defensively by East Tennessee. Here comes the Bucks, three on two. Jennings, the Pell three, got the layup. Bucks by 10. Mister laughing a little bit. He really surprised Pell three. Jerry thought he was going to shoot the three. But then Mister spot Jerry running down the lane for the layup. Before the stop, it's an offensive foul. That's a foul. That's a screen foul that the official caught away from the ball. A bucket will not count. That's the reason why the man was so wide open for the jam. Powers cleared him out. <laughs> foul was on Tim Powers, number 44. Oh, it was a great pick, Randy. It was just absolutely awesome. Tom loved it. Unfortunately, those six eyes out there, those officials, two of those eyes caught that pick. I didn't see it myself. We're going to take a look at the feed from Jennings. Oh, he's finishing it off by Mr. Talford. Those two guys, hey, they got to love each other. I wonder if they room together on these road trips. And talk about the passes they're going to throw to one another. <laughs> Jennings slapped the ball away from Ricky Ned that time, so it. App State gets the ball underneath. You like the way Calvin Tapper jams the ball. I'll tell you something else he can do. He can play those uh, video games. I saw him in the hotel <laughs> take uh, Frizzell Silvers to drive in school in that video game called Pole Position. Well, this is NASCAR country, too. <laughs> Forgot about that. Well, he, he, he if he drives his car back in uh, uh, Castlewood like he was driving that video car, you better be watching that. He's going to pick up some tickets. Almost as many as you, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's kind of that, that, that's kind of debatable. <laughs> they love me over in Cullowee. I know ever controlling in that county. Spurlock misses the jumper. Long rebound saved well by Powers. Ward for two. And Ward bags the three. for three. Yes. You just got to pick them up in transition. You got to make sure you pick up the Buccaneers in transition or they'll hit those threes. But, you know, talking about transition and threes, Ed Ward is hit 48% of the three-point circle. Inside, Powers, one-hand shot, no goal. Jennings with a rebound. Here come the Bucks. Jennings misses. <laughs> Ricky Ned with a rebound for App State. Boy, he hurt. He really went up and hurt Tim Powers on that rebound. A two by Billy Ross. Look at this pass. Great feed 
to Pelfrey for the layup. And again, at the top of the show, we talked about transition defense. That was real weak. Apple, Appalachian State was back for that, but uh, Jerry Pelfrey was in the lane with nobody guarding him. Great job by Drizel Silvers, and then the foul against Tim Power. That's a good call by the official. He's right on top. Tim Powers was trying to protect the man from getting to the ball to save, but you know what he did? He put a, he put a left elbow in the man's shoulders and pushed him into the Buccaneer bench. Drizel Silvers did a great job right there, tapping the ball away and then going after it. Drew the foul from Powers. And we're going to take a break. Yes, we can. 3.50 to go in the first half. And the Bucks by 10. We'll be right back. Three-point shots can be a real crowd lifter unless you give up one on the next possession by the other team. This is what happens. Well, you're going to see Calvin Chalfer get one behind the three-point circle. Pass to Mister. East Tennessee State does such a good job of posting up behind those three point, uh, that three point circle, and uh, they got so many weapons, so many people that can nail it. Ward made the three pointer, then Talford answered with one, and before we took the break, Trezell Silver said two free throws to get, make it a 12 point East Tennessee lead. Let's take a look at the layup by Pelfrey a moment ago. Boy, great recognition inside. The defense was back there. They just let Pelfrey go through. And I talked to Grafton Young, assistant coach for East Tennessee, about Jerry Pelfrey. He said, hey coach, he's so intense. He puts a lot of pressure on himself, but now he's beginning to relax and he's going to get better. They call him, as we see the series record, Bucks lead it pretty handily. They've won five in a row. You know, they call Pelfrey a blue-collar worker because he works so hard and scraps. Scrap iron. That would be a good name for him, too. <laughs> Scrap iron from Paintsville. Check all the towns these kids come from. Havelock, Denmark, Chapel Hill, Clinch Grove, Culpeper, Castlewood, Paintsville, Gaffney. And Major Gear walked with the basketball as he came back up the floor. Randy, you're not going to get very many frequent flyer mileage going to places like Kings Mountain and uh, Castlewood, places like that. But boy, that just tells you what a great job these East Tennessee State coaches have done to go out into these small areas and find a great team that's now ranked 16th in the nation. App State inbound. Spurlock tapped away by Trezell Silvers as they tried to go down low to power. 3.26 to go, first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll be talking with East Tennessee State's new athletic director, Dr. Janet Shelton, about the Buccaneer athletic program and where it's going. And I tell you, it's reaching new heights every day with this basketball team. Nice defense, Marty Storr. East Tennessee cutting the passing lanes off, denying the ball very well. Well, again, you, again, you make the point. You make the point. That's good coaching. Alan LaForce has brought a new dimension to the Buccaneer program by putting that half-court pressure in there. Turnaround jumper by Steve Spurlock is good. East Tennessee quickly up the floor. Marty Story missed the layup. The rebound saved by East Tennessee. Rizal Silvers to gear. Mr. Jennings again getting some rest on the bench. Pelfrey misses the three. Rebound taken away by Jeff Williams to that state. Walking at the ooh. Spurlock put up a rocket. However, the rebound by Billy Ross is good. Spurlock also may have gotten away with the travel. Yeah, I think he did, but they were very fortunate. They scrapped and came up with the bucket. Grizel Silvers is away. He's hammered by Powers, and if it's Powers, that's three. And it is. But Grizel, Grizel just really got away with that because he took the ball into the lane. He took it to the gut of the defense and uh, got off the floor, and if there's no reach in, he doesn't have anything to do but throw it up against the backboard. Grizel Silvers, the freshman, he made a smart play or two in what little time he played against Memphis State. I like this young man. He, he does a good job for the Buccaneers. Well, you got some good people that are coming into the game for uh, Coastal Force now that are uh, contributing. We talk a lot about Pelfrey, but you're right about uh, Silvers. Michael Woods has got some playing time in this game, but uh, in the first half, we've seen a lot of Buccaneers come onto the floor. 
Silvers makes a pair. He's got four points, and all four have been from the free throw line. So the Buccaneers maintain a 10-point lead with 2.21 to go. East Tennessee State making them play a 94-foot game. Keith Jennings back in the lineup now for East Tennessee State. Down low, it goes to Roderick Parker, but he's fouled before that shot. He'll get two shots. And yeah, I think Tom Apke's got to be pleased because the pressure out front uh, has not created a lot of turnovers. You're going to see the shot. No, no, he goes up. That looks like a shot. The defense probably relaxed a little bit, but there you see the foul on the shot. You got to be kind of happy because uh, not too many perimeter turnovers, uh, although the pressure is really out there uh, being applied by the Buccaneers. App State is a team we told you hits only about 63.5% from the foul line. Parker misses that one, so he'll get one more. His team down by 10 with 2.04 to go first half. Second shot, rip, he hit it. Tom Apke, you see right there, told me, said, hey, Ron, you know, we really miss Rodney Peel. We've had to make so many adjustments without him. How many times do you see a team lose their best big man, their best point guard, and still have the same record as they did a year before? Rodney Peel, one of two preseason All-Stars in the Southern Conference, who will be back with a medical redshirt. Allen, or Greg Dennis for East Tennessee, one, and Rodney the other. Down low, stolen away, Marty Storr. Again, great denial by East Tennessee State. Great denial by Jones and Storey. Calvert, spinning away. Really worked good in that passing end. He got a trip. Call the jump ball. It goes to Appalachian State anyway. Tom Apke wanted to walk. Well, Tom wanted to walk. Allen, you see right there, vehemently wants the uh, trip. Neither one of them got what they wanted, but uh, meanwhile, Appalachian State's going to get the basketball on the, on the jump. Alternating possession. Coaches don't normally both get what they want on whistles anyway. Only about half the time. 50-50. <laughs> Spurlock spinning away, it's short. Kept alive, Trezell Silver's got the ball. Here comes Keith Jennings. Hardy Story in the corner. Calvert for three, short. Darrell Jones, Keith Jennings is there. He'll save it, and you gotta credit Marty Look at keeping that alive. There's a foul against that State. State had that rebound. Marty Story tipped it, kept it alive, and the Bucks kept the ball. Well, he's the guy that kept the one alive on the defensive end. You're going to see right here. I think that's Jones. He's going to go up for the shot. And look, let's see who's underneath right there. Trezell Silvers. And uh, maybe it's Trezell in the middle of there that kept that alive. Mr. comes up with it. Here again, Mr. Jennings, what dimensions he adds to the game. He's averaging almost four rebounds a game. Darrell Jones misses the first shot. Darrell Jones really has been atrocious. Only 29% from the foul line. Well, not a lot of touch I, there, is it? I like, I love, I really think about this guy a lot because he's only nine miles from my hometown down in South Carolina. <laughs> Gaffney, the place where the peach, anybody has been down 85 knows uh, where Darrell Jones lives. You're remembered by that big monument, the peach. Burlock double teams, turning around, missed the shot, rebound inside, Parker got the follow. Eight point game now, 45-37, 19 seconds to go in the first half. Ten seconds, Jennings out front. Bucks are assured of at least an eight point lead at halftime. Jennings lost it to Talbert, give and go. The first half has come to a close. It's halftime in Boone, North Carolina. The Battle of the Mountains. Halfway through belongs to East Tennessee. We'll be back with our halftime activities 
in just a moment. On the back of Mr. Jennings' shoes is the name of his brother, Kirk, his younger brother who is in Saudi Arabia. Our prayers certainly go out not only with, to him, but everybody else. Major Gear, goaltending against Spurlock. Count the two, and the Bucks lead by 10 again. That's a good call out front by the official, uh, Bill Cheek. You're going to see the good penetration. Anytime you penetrate, you're going to make the defense pay and get a good shot off right here, and the official makes a good call on the uh, basket interference. Back to live action. Right side it comes to Jeff Williams. And Wardra. The jump shot good by Tim Power, who, by the way, is playing with three personal fouls now for App State. His father played uh, college basketball. He's a teammate of uh, Tom Apke at Creighton. Major Gear bangs a three off the side of the glass. No good. Major Gear really struggling with that outside shot for East Tennessee. Nice pass. Out again, fouled from behind by Darrell Jones. Appalachian State really getting off to a good uh, start in the second half, and we always talk about those first five minutes. You're going to see a good injury pass right here to Tim Powers. He shapes up real good in there. Darrell Jones cannot get to it. The help comes from, the, from Marty Story, but you get a foul from the rear. Darrell, as he chases the ball, fouls him as he goes to the bucket. For Darrell Jones, that's his first foul. The first team foul on East Tennessee to pass. Powers makes the first of two free throws. We finish that story on Powers. He played, his father played with Tom Apke at Creighton. His father died just before he came to Appalachian State. He really seriously considered not coming, but only because of the close friendship between his father and Tom Apke made him come to this school. It's now a six point game, 47 41. Download to Darrell Jones. Back to Story. He rips the two. The feet were just inside the line. A two-pointer for Marty Story. So many weapons. Even Marty Story stands out there and pops that uh, almost three-point shot. App State works the basketball around now. 18.30 to go. Away from the ball. A foul against Marty Story. Or Darrell Jones. They're they're do, Jones. Yes, that's right, Randy. They're doing a real good job now getting the ball to their people down around the block. That was the thing that Grafton Young told me that they really wanted to concentrate on is playing good interior post defense. The problem a lot of times is when you get the ball in that easily, it might be that the, penalty, that the pressure is not as good out on the perimeter. Good job by Ricky Ned, the freshman, going between two defenders to get the layup. And it's a six-point game again. The whistle and the foul will be against Appalachian State. So how many times do you see that? A team get a bucket, and then ETSU, as they go in transition, they're way out front, defense running with their back to the ball. Was on Powers. That's his fourth. He'll have to sit down as he gets that fourth foul early. Going to the line, Marty Story. Well, that's not a real smart foul on him because all they have to do is turn around. They can see him coming. He can avoid the contact and let Marty Story go in and score. Now he has to sit for a long time. Makes the first of a pair. Story will get another. Story with three points this half for East Tennessee. Going for four. He got it. Got the roll. Four points per story in this half. Eight-point lead again for the Buccaneers. Here come the Mountaineers up the floor. Story also told me, said, hey, Coach, watch my free throw shooting today. I want you to make sure you point out that I am shooting better from the free throw line. Off balance, Williams shot, bothered by Mr. Jennings. The rebound was by Ricky Ned. Here's hanging tough with a good inside play. Nice pass. Out of bounds. Brazell Silver got a great feed from Mr. Jennings, but the freshman couldn't handle it. He dropped it out of bounds. The Mountaineers get it back. Got to be frustrating for a guy like Mr. Jennings to be able to penetrate like that. He could have gone ahead and shot it. He dumps it off, and Brazell Silvers couldn't put the handle on it. 17.40 to go. Bucks by eight. Here's Spurlock. Jumper short. 
scramble for the ball. Spurlock gets it back. It's the layup. And Grizel Silvers is there for the rebound. Bucks by six, 51-45. In the lane, Major Gear got his short. And Jennings almost gets it back. Saved by Ward. Ricky Ned with a slam for Appalachian State. And the crowd is really getting into this game. Alvin West and all of his teammates, uh, I mean, uh, Major Gear, really struggling right now on the offensive end. Well, the crowd is back in. There's the double pick, or the pick by Silvers, and then the foul against Appalachian State. What East Tennessee State tries to do, East Tennessee straight State tries to play that little two-man game out there and let Mr. Jennings make all the decision. If he look, watch right here, Randy. We're going to see a great pass in there, and you're going to see the finish off by the Mount Mountaineers. Ricky Nett with six points this half, away from the ball, a other whistle, and a foul against Rodney English of East Tennessee. And if that's on him, that's his third. The foul a moment ago was on. Steve Spurlock, his second. There's a good look at Tom Apke in his fifth year as the Mountaineers head coach. He's one of only 57 Division I head coaches to have played and coached in the NCAA tournament. Bucks lost it out of bounds. App State gets it back. They're down only four. That's a good pass interior. Just couldn't come up with it. Rodney English really struggles. He can't put the handle on it. That's a third pass inside Mr. Jennings has made that his teammates couldn't control. Inside, layup no good. Rebound Rodney English. Gets it away to the mister. Here comes East Tennessee with a four-point lead. There's the foul against Jeff Williams in the backcourt. That's his second foul. That's one of those situations where I'm not really sure if he fouls Mr. Jennings, but it looks like a foul. Earlier in the first half, he got away with that and took the ball down and scored. Keith Jennings with the ball. A lot of time left in anybody's ball game. See the little two-man game out here, and Mr. Jennings makes all the decisions. That's a pretty good one right there. Jennings misses the three. Pelfrey gets it back. Misses the three, long rebound up the floor. Ed Ward's going to get the stuff. Settle for the score layup. It's a two-point game now. This is as close as Appalachian State Benson early in the half. First half, that is. The noise is definitely. Spinning away, Jennings. Nice speed to English. Missed it, got his rebound. West misses. Up State got the ball. Calford stole it back. Then a blocking foul against Roderick Parker, his third. So the Mountaineers beginning to get in some foul trouble. Powers already has four. Parker now with three. Two observations, Randy. One, I really think uh, the Mountaineers are playing real good half-court defense. My second observation, I think these, these Buccaneers from East Tennessee State really look tired to me. 15-22 to go in the, first, in the basketball game. East Tennessee down by, or ahead by two, 51-49. We'll be right back. East Tennessee's one-time 12-point lead has now been chopped to two as we look at Appalachian State. Appalachian State really getting some transition buckets themselves, and I really think it's because they're doing such a good job in the half-court defense. And App State head coach Tom Apke got on the PA system and asked him to please refrain from throwing objects onto the floor, which is wise. Could result in a technical in a close game that'll really cost you. Pelfrey's open for three. Yes. Randy, that's good two-man basketball. Mr. Jennings can make that decision. If the man guarding Pelfrey who sets a pick, if he picks up Mr. Jennings and helps out, Jerry just steps back for the three-point shot. Mr. Jennings is the key to make all the decisions on that. Talford tipped it out. App State gets it back now on the side. Another point on that, if the, if the wing player defense uh, really pinches in to help on the drive by Mr., he can kick it to him. He's got two possibilities of three-point shots, people spotting up behind the line. That's pretty good two-on-two uh, -two basketball. 
Five-point lead for the Buccaneers. Appalachian State with the ball. They had it chopped to two before that three by Jerry Pelfrey a moment ago. Spinning away is Spurlock in the lane. Yes, nice move by Spurlock. Today isolating Steve Spurlock right in the middle of the lane. Jerry Pelfrey, I think, did a pretty good job defensively. He just maybe needed to get a hand in the face on the shot. There's that pick. Pelfrey again. This time they pick it up well. Jennings all the way for the layup, missed it. Furlock with the rebound, and then Jennings took it away. <laughs> That's so many great things. West, a two from the corner. Almost a three, but a two for Alvin West. That's a four-point turnaround, any way you look at it. Mr. Jennings misses a layup, but then he steals it back. The NBA people that we've heard talk about Mr. Jennings say he might be the most intelligent point guard in the nation. Ward out front, dog by West. Here's Spurlock into the lane, a whistle and a foul. It'll be against East Tennessee, probably Alvin West. We'll see. Marty Story, rather, gets the foul, and for Story, it will be his second foul. <laughs> he gave the official Bill Cheek a real good look. I really think the officials have done a pretty good job, I guess because I'm thinking about where we did our last game. Much better than what we saw uh, Wednesday night in Memphis. Right? That's all we need to say right there. <laughs> this game is being very well officiated. Williams against Jennings. Appalachian State being patient. Of course, the uh, Buccaneer defense is playing pretty good on the other end. The freshman, Ricky Ned, did a good number on Marty Story right there. Is West in transition, ripped a three for Alvin West. Well, there's the two team strength. You got Mountaineers pounded it in from the block, and then you got the transition answer by the Buccaneers with Alvin West. Nice lob taken away, then saved beautifully by Jeff Williams, the freshman. Long up the floor, this is Calford. Jump ball, it goes to Appalachian State. Good defense, good recovery that time by the Mountain Man. I don't know if we see a replay. Calvin Talford, for some reason, couldn't get the ball uh, up to shoot it. And uh, I don't know, maybe we can see right here the reason why. He catches the ball pretty good. He takes it onto the hole. That's a pretty good defense. Uh, I think, who, who was that? That was Ricky Ned that reached in and came up with the... Uh, tie up for the jump ball. Well, Ricky Ned's an impressive looking young man. He really is. Great plays on both ends of the floor tonight, or this afternoon. That time, the ball taken away by Mr. Jennings. Great pass Good to Roger catch. English. And this is a dunk he does not miss. Buccaneers by six again, 61-55. Nice catch by Rodney English, and uh, he just really finished that off. That was the, uh, that whole transition series precipitated by the good defensive play by the Buccaneers on the other end. Burlock spinning away, missed the shot. Whistle. Foul will be against East Tennessee State. Be on Alvin West. Pretty good spin move, and let's see if we see, catch a foul right there. I'm not really sure where the foul might come. Okay, from the rear, did you see that, Randy? I didn't pick that up. They gave the foul to Alvin West. It will be his third. But they say he was not shooting, so maybe away from the ball before we got into the picture there. I certainly didn't see a foul. The way he, Appalachian State shoots free throws, that's probably a blessing. But look at here. Look who comes up with the steal. And the bucket. Keith Jennings with a steal and the layup. And the Buccaneers out by eight again. 63-58, equaling their halftime advantage. Nice feed to Ross, who got the layup. Billy Ross and a great feed from Spurlock. Great backdoor cut. You can do that when teams pressure the wing pass. Rodney English couldn't hold it. Goes out of bounds. That State gets it back now, down by six. Really kind of surprised Appalachian State not doing a lot more backdoor cuts because I tell you, the Buccaneers are doing a superb job getting into the passing lanes, and when you do that, the offense has to have pressures of mind to go backdoor. Furlock got 
got in trouble that time looking for somebody to pass to, then pulled up and hit the jump shot. And got away with a, maybe a shuffling of the feet. <laughs> Jennings penetrates, drops it back to Pelfrey, open for three, no good. Boy, I don't know how, we got bodies flying everywhere, and I'm not really sure if I can see why they're flying. They're hitting the floor, and, and yet uh, <laughs> there's, there's nothing. 11.33 to go. There's a timeout as Alan LaForce tries to put a little bit of force on the officials. <laughs> Four-point lead for East Tennessee. 11.33 left. We're set to go. Ricky Ned of Appalachian State did not score, didn't even shoot in the first half, but he has eight in the second half. That's pretty good pass interior, but look here. Jeff Williams comes up with the ball somehow, and he puts it in, and that's a fresh was that, was that Ricky Ned or was that Jeff Williams? That was Jeff Williams. He's the other freshman that starts for Appalachian State. Off the foot, saved, however, by Williams. Off the foot of Ricky Ned. As I mentioned, he did not even shoot the ball, didn't get a shot in the first half. And they... Steve Spurlock created that himself. Nice move to the bucket by Spurlock. Would you say the Buccaneers are giving up some really, really high percentage, of shot, high percentage shots in the second half? Burlock with a rebound. Oh, we got a game, Randy. We really got a game here at Boone. Two-point game. Shot no good. Rebound taken away by Ross. And he traveled. And Apke wanted a foul. That was a good takeaway that time. Uh, Apke wanted a foul, but, uh, you know, the East Tennessee State Buccaneers, have really, when they get their hands on the ball, they got to bring it into the chest and uh, get the elbows out. Jerry Pelfrey, App State could have tied on that possession. They're on a six-point run here. Jennings to Talford in the corner. Pelfrey, yes! I really like that two-man two, two uh, play. And actually, it becomes a three-man play when Mr. Jennings takes it to one side of the court or the other, play three-on-three three with a the wing. There's the steal, the double team by English and Talford again. Roderick Parker results in a turnover. Bucks have the ball back now in a five-point lead. One of the few turnovers they got outside on the perimeter. Most of the turnovers they got inside. Halford buries a three. And all of a sudden, after App State was on a 6-0 run and it cuts a two with a chance to tie, East Tennessee has buried a couple of threes. They're back out by eight. And they're going to go back and stand a little bit in a 2-3 zone. Good save by Parker. Then there's the foul against Rodney English. I believe if it's, on, if it's on English, that's four. That's what's really a problem. And when you go to that zone, is you think you'd be able to rebound out of it, but uh, you see Appalachian State comes up with this board, and then uh, they they uh, they get a foul right here. It is on English, and it is his. They say his second. I don't think that's right, but we'll check it. the line will be Broderick Parker. He'll get two shots. He's a 64% foul shooter, and that's about what App State hits as a team. Tom Apke had his team in the Southern Conference Tournament Championship Finals last year. They were in the regular season race just about all the way. Won over 20 games. And East Tennessee beat them pretty handily. Parker makes a pair, and it's a 69-63, six-point Buccaneer lead. You see Tom Apke, boy, could you imagine what they would be like if Rodney Peel is in this game and in the other games they played? They played very well, even without him. Two-man basketball out front with the wing player, making the third one. Backdoor cut, good what cut. A feed that time from Keith Jennings to Pelfrey. Marty Story gets the follow. Get the defense spread, and Pelfrey, good Good recognition by Jerry to do the excellent back backdoor cut. Well, he wanted to go back for the three. He was covered. He broke to the bucket and a great feed for Jenny. That's all respect. They respect his three-point shooting ability. East Tennessee in that zone. Mountaineers having to take a lot of time to work in for a shot. Ross is three. No good. Calford in the Raptors for the rebound. Here's Jennings, West penetrates, drops it back to Story, jump shot 
partially blocked by Parker. Crowd saying air ball. Air ball because Parker played good defense. Appalachian State needs to really take some time right now against his zone to keep passing, make the zone move, and uh, re reverse court. Now get a good shot. Here's a three again. Ross with the three. He missed his last opportunity, but passed it on that one. Five-point game again now. 71-66. Watch Pelfrey inside. See what his man does on the penetration. Look at this. Nice pass. Easy layup by Story, and it looked as if Hap State was just standing and watching Jennings work. Well, I tell you, he freezes a lot of players with his shake and bake, and he just took it right down to the gut that time, and the uh, defensive man comes to it. He gives it off to a teammate for a bucket. Outside, Parker penetrates, missed the shot. Calford with a rebound. Jennings for three. Yes! understand people who don't respect him enough or either have, don't have the presence of mind to come stop him in the transition. He's going to shoot it if you can leave him wide open. And most times he'll nail it. Ten-point lead now for the Buccaneers. Ward for three. Short. Saved beautifully. Great hustle by Billy Ross. He lost it, however, on great defensive pressure by Keith Jennings. All of a sudden, that two-point game we had at that last timeout is now a ten-point game. Seven oh. minutes and ten seconds to go. Check that tie out by Allen Force. Look at that tie. I wonder if he got that from Larry Finch's wardrobe <laughs> in Memphis. <laughs> Larry may, may have given that to him. <laughs> Bucks by ten with 7.10 to go. We'll be right back. Here's the story. Seven minutes, ten seconds left, and a ten-point East Tennessee State lead. Appalachian State had cut it to two and had the ball. And all of a sudden, a three by Pelfrey and a three by West, and, or Jennings, rather, and you're back in the ballgame. Look at the shooting percentages. That warmed up quite a bit. First five minutes, East Tennessee was only hitting about 40%. Now it's 64%. Tim Powers now back in the game with that fourth foul. He'll play these last seven minutes out. Jennings has it stolen by Billy Ross. Good pickup by Billy Ross. If he doesn't pick it up, uh, Jennings is going to come and get it back. He's Tennessee State still in that zone. Rebound. Parker got the lead. 76 68, eight point lead. App State hanging tough. Hey, at home against the number 16 team in the nation, you got to like where you are right now. Calford to Alvin West out front with uh, 6.10 to go. That's the time remaining. Keith Jennings spinning away. Pelfrey open for three. Yes. Jerry Pelfrey. That is so beautiful. They isolated Jerry Pelfrey, Mr. Jennings on the left side. The other three players were on the other side of the floor. And I'll tell you, if you don't pick up Mr. Jennings, he's going to score. But if you forget Pelfrey, he'll nail the three. 11-point lead for the Bucs, their biggest in the game was 12. That was right before the half. Billy Ross, baseline Spurlock, pulls up, misses the jump shot. Calford gets the rebound. Up the floor quickly, Bucks have a two-on-two. -two. Story pulls out. Here's Jennings, wide open. Oh. <laughs> That's an automatic assist, and you know what? <laughs> Story says, I'm not going to shoot this ball, but give me an assist to the mister. Appalachian State calls time. It's a 14 point East Tennessee State lead, and we have a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. 14 point lead for East Tennessee, their biggest of the ball game. App State with the ball now. Really going to the zone is, has, has really helped the Buccaneers, Randy. Tim Powers in the lane. Move, but a foul on Marty Story. And keep in mind, before the end of the telecast, we will be announcing the winner of the Shoney's Player of the Game Award. After Memphis State, there was no doubt, went to uh, Mr. Jennings. He could very easily get it today, too, but we'll tell you who that is later on in the ball game. I'll tell you, Mr. Jennings could very easily get the Player of the Game almost any game he plays. at the line. Missed it. Had a good touch. It just wouldn't fall. There's Alan LaForce. His first year as a Buccaneers head coach. Powers 
makes the second. East Tennessee State, 12 out of 23 in three-point shots. And App State's shooting a good percentage, three out of five, but only five attempts. That's the difference in the ballgame. Pelfrey passed up an open three. They want to be patient, run some clock here with a 13-point lead. A steal nearly by Spurlock, but then the foul going after Alvin West. We talk about wins and we talk about uh, coaches. As you see, Allen the fourth really hollering and directing. He really worked hard. He didn't feel too good today. He was a little sick last night. Didn't go to dinner with the team. And his wife and uh, Shirley, and uh, he just kind of stayed in. But uh, we talk about coaches. You see Tom Apke, Dickie Warren. Congratulations to all of us. Sullivan Central High School got his 800th win last week. Billy Ross gets the layup off the turnover. It's a nine-point game, or rather 11-point game, 82-71 now. Still plenty of time for App State. 4.24 to go. Talford with the ball. Out to Jerry Pelfrey between the circles. East Tennessee running a little clock now. Not much of that clock left with a lead of 11. Playing a little two two man basketball with Mr. Jennings. Actually, it's three three uh, three man basketball as you see uh, the wing and the point and the post player posting the point playing up top, picking uh, Pelfrey picking for Mr. Jennings. Jennings all nice. the way. Great feed to Story. Then there's the foul. And Story came up quickly, but he'll get two shots. All that was precipitated by the great inside penetration by Mr. Jennings. Look at him. Brings people to him. He dishes off to Marty Story, who picks up the foul. Spurlock picked up the personal foul for Appalachian State. How do you stop that? If you stop Mr. Jennings, he's going to, you know, the penetration, he's going to kick it out. If you pinch on the wings, he's going to dump it to, to people that can shoot threes. If the man who sets the pick is guarded by someone who jumps in on the pick, pick then the person who sent the pick, in this case Pelfrey, is open for a three. Pretty good basketball offensively. 12-point lead for the Bucs. The story cashes in on one out of two from the free throw line. Here's Spurlock. Charge against Spurlock. That's four on Spurlock. I'll tell you, since that two-point game, the Buccaneers have really exploded offensively, and they play pretty good defense. But look, look at the play right here. It's a pretty good defense. Man set, and that's a great call by the official. That's five on Spurlock. He's fouled out, and Ed Ward coming back in now for Appalachian State. Ed Ward sat a lot of time against his zone. I would have thought he would have played more because he's a man that can shoot 48% from the three-point uh, perimeter circle. 3.33 to go. East Tennessee has five players in double figures. And West lost the ball. Our officials jumping in here. Might change the call. Let's see what happens. Really don't know what's going on. Really sure what the discussion is all about, but uh, it might end up in the hands of East Tennessee State when we come back. Anyway, we're going to take a break. 3:21 to go in the basketball game. I tell you what, we'll just stay here, right? 83-71, a 12-point lead for East Tennessee. I still don't know what the call was. Anyway, Tom Apke was upset with it. I'm not really sure what it was either, because uh, you know I don't know if uh, one official overruled another with a kick. Uh, I think it might be that, Randy. I think they might have called a kick, but uh, it looks like the Buccaneers are going to retain possession of the ball. And a fresh 45 on the shot clock is going to help them. 321 on the game clock. East Tennessee, if they hang on, will be 18-2 on the year, 7-1 in the Southern Conference as they start the second half of Southern Conference play. And they'll be taking on the moccasins of UT Chattanooga Monday night in Johnson City at the Mini Dome. And boy, what a big, big game that's going to be 
UTC if they win tonight at home against Western Carolina. Furman wins. They'll still be in a three-way tie for first place. I asked Mr. the other day, or rather last night, I said, Mr. what was the greatest win this year? He said, he started to say North Carolina State, then he said, hey, look, it had to be Memphis State because it was a big game. It was a very tough physical game, and we never shot threes like that. I asked him, what's the most disappointing game? And I already probably suspected that answer. He said, of course, the loss at Chattanooga. But he said, hey, look, Coach, the game Monday night against the Moccasins of Chattanooga will be the biggest game of my career in the Dome. That says a lot because he's had some big ones. Well, now we go back to action, and Alvin West, or rather Marty Story, will play it in. Lobs it in the front court to Jerry Pelfrey with 3.20 to go. I'm telling you, I like the way Pelfrey played that second half against Memphis, and he's picked it up here. Another great performance today by Pelfrey. Well, his brother plays in the SEC with Kentucky, and I tell you, this young man can play for a lot of people. Jennings, one-hander, won't go. Rebound, Billy Ross. They milked it down to six on the shot clock before they took that one. Well, they got the ball into the hands of the person that they wanted to take it. It's a pretty good shot, just wouldn't fall. Again, the 2-3 zone, and it's been real nice for Allen LaForce. Uh, they struggle, I thought, in their man offense, or defense, rather. A three for Appalachian State. Keith Jennings gets it into Marty Story. Nine-point ball game. Still plenty of time. Calford, yeah. A two for Calvin Calford. So many weapons. So many weapons. If it's not Calford, it's West. If it's not West, it's Gear. If it's not Gear, it's Pelfrey. It's everybody. They can shoot the ball. Outside shot. Ward won't go. Powers kept it alive, no good. Rebound inside, Ricky Ned with a follow. Great job by the Mountaineers keeping that ball alive on the board. Somebody's open. There he is, but he turns it up. He's gonna milk clock. West has it. Flips it back to Pelfrey for three. Swift, love it. Blue collar, look at him, I love it, I love it. Going to get more playing time as you go down to tournament time. February is going to be a great month for Jerry Pelfrey. He's coming on. 88-76. Powers muscles it up. Got the shot. He'll get the free throw. As the foul is on East Tennessee. Pelfrey is very tired right now. I think he wants to come out. He just dropped his mouthpiece on the floor. <laughs> he, he's been a blue collar worker here today and a blue collar did you check that mouthpiece out that fell on the floor it's blue too everything about Jerry Pelfrey's blue look at that mouthpiece you ever see a blue mouthpiece that's the second foul on Pelfrey and why don't we go ahead and announce our Shoney's player of the game and it is none other than that young man right there Jerry Pelfrey unofficially 19 points in the ball game we'll check that game's not over but he wins the Shoney's player of the game for East Tennessee here against Appalachian State. He's put together three good halves. The last one at Memphis and two halves today. Keith Jennings, a foul, and Jennings will be at the line with two shots. If he hits them, it probably will ice the ball game with a minute 14 to go. Well, all the men around the conference, the coaches, they, they're real concerned about the Calvin Talfords and Mr. Jennings, but you know now they're gonna be looking at uh, some box scores and they're gonna see the name of Jerry Pelfrey and I'm sure that's got to cause some concern. Let's take a look at one reason he is our player of the game. Well, that's a good job kicking it back. They got a lot of confidence in his ability to shoot the ball. And again, he's just a blue collar worker, just comes and plays hard. The kind of kid, Randy, that I really think most teams would really love to have if you're going to have a championship type team. Jennings makes a pair, and it's a 12 point lead again, 90 78, minute 14 to go. App State's going to have to fire up a three. If they hit it, call timeout. Now near steal. Ward. Baseline. There's the miss by Ricky Ned. The rebound by Marty Story. And that'll just about do it with a minute left. And that says a lot about the frustration of Appalachian State the last 10 minutes of this game. App State has not lost here at home very often. Apps are 38 and 9 since the start of the 88 season. 
just mop-up time now, but uh, a lot of players have got into this game, both teams. Powers, jump shot, no good. Tipped around, rebound, Keith Jennings with 30 seconds. He just hold it. They'll be shooting free throws. Maybe Appalachian State will be merciful to us, not even foul. Oh, what do we got here? They're not even going to play any. They're not only not going to foul, they're not going to play any defense. 4-78. Biggest lead of the game for East Tennessee comes at the 15-second mark, a 16-point advantage. A three by Williams won't go. Rebound. East Tennessee's Alvin West comes out with it with two seconds. One second, that's the ball game. It's all over from Boone, North Carolina, as East Tennessee State has come into Boone and won over Appalachian State, 94-78. Buccaneers now 18 and 2 on the year, 7 and 1 in Southern Conference play, going into a big, big game Monday night in Johnson City against UT Chattanooga. And we'll be back to wrap this one up for you in just a moment. <laughs> 